as we call back Mr. Richard Bonboya and Mr. Dan Mejia. Q&A session to be moderated by the founder, editor-in-chief and president of Adobo Magazine, Miss Angel Guerrero. Hello there, good afternoon everyone, and it's been a wonderful session on sustainability and technology. I'm gonna sit on that couch. Okay. So I'm with um, Bon, <laughs> Dan, and Ron. Yeah. Very nice. Um, yeah, um, so we combined this session where we have someone who's in national technology of Microsoft and two from fast moving uh, categories that's uh, agenda is sustainability. So I wanted to um, talk to uh, Bon first about, um, you mentioned that trust is going to be the new currency, right? And you mentioned that brands that invest or companies that invest in technology uh, it has been proven that it helps business growth. Um, with that in mind though, I mean, you talk about trust, but the digital space is also a, a very fragile space when it comes to trust. So, I mean, what can you say about that? I mean, although it is the currency you're looking for, it's also a space that is quite fragile. I mean, it can go either way. Uh, that is true. That's why globally, all over the world, uh, I think now more than at any time, the demand for privacy uh, now becomes both a societal and a legal discussion. In fact, our own uh, law on privacy was passed uh, just uh, in 2017, just very early, uh, recognizing and reflecting that uh, traditional institutions need to come in to build that trust. So privacy is one. Also now, uh, I think uh, consumers and uh, users are becoming more discerning, uh, both in their habits, uh, changing passwords regularly, not using one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, and also being good uh, discerners of, uh, of uh, sites that are trustworthy and not. But let me, uh, if you don't mind, let me just take this uh, moment for a personal advocacy. Most of the concerns in privacy are directed at governments having access to private citizen information, which is a valid case. But the real harm in the things that is not yet visible to us is that the more long-term uh, harm is being done not by big brother but by little brother. These are people, young people, students who have not yet appreciated the impact of respecting others' privacy. And in schools now we see young students who probably could not yet appreciate the long-term implications of not doing naughty things post very thing, uh, things that can never be taken back. Uh, so I, I think as a personal advocacy, as young, all of us young individual need to realize that we, not, we should not be part of that problem and we should be part of the solution in building trust in a system that it seems like everyone wants to be in. Uh, you also talked about um, sustainability of people who are online, right? Uh, there might be a burnout point eventually. You know, we had um, Alex from Instagram and Isabel here earlier and, um, you know, they talked about authenticity, they talk about, you know, measuring things real time, tagging brands, talk about endorsement and all of that. But ultimately, um, when we were talking about it earlier, you said, you know, it's like you only live twice. How long will that last, right? How long will the Instagram and the influencer part of it last? Um, will there be a burnout or saturation amongst our consumers? I wish they were here to talk about it, but that's something that deals a lot with digital um, exposure and the time we all spend on digital. And I remember you said at the end, stay analog, mm. right? Uh, maybe you can expound on that. I mean, we're, we're so connected. You know, brands are so much into digital. We're embracing it in a big way. It helps business. It does certainly helps uh, messages uh, that we want to spread. But yeah, what's the merit of going back to analog or staying analog? Before I answer that, uh, I, I recognize that it seems like authenticity is a, something that people now value. Right? But in our development, emotional and physical development, we also need to mature and realize that in the hierarchy of values, authenticity may not be one of the higher values down the road. Uh, I think in the end, the trade-off is between the, the, the need for authenticity and the need to make things harmonize and move forward together, which sometimes is an antithesis of authenticity. 
I don't like my neighbor. I can be authentic about it and be a bitch about it and, and, and tell that to my neighbor. However, the bigger, greater goal is to be a good neighbor over to be an authentic neighbor. I think that's, that's something we need to, to discuss. So the question is, uh, uh, is going back to analog an option? The truth is, what that really tells you is that the real solution is neither digital nor analog, but human values. So technology, even before when we switch to, to stones for counting, is, is technology. In the end, tools and technologies need to make us more human rather than make us less human. So we also have to be cognizant with all these things that draw us away from being humans. The one that should, which we should focus on is, are those things that make us more human, I think. Well, thank you for that. Now, going to talk about authenticity, right? We have two brands here, Unilever, um, who is a fast-moving uh, goods, and also H&M uh, fast fashion. But you can see they're making huge efforts to protect the environment, sustainability, the um, circular uh, economy. Um, so again, you talk about fast fashion and you talk about fast moving goods, and then you're talking about sustainability. It's sort of, uh-huh, do I trust it? Is it authentic? So um, how, how, how are your uh, consumers or community um, engaging with you on your sustainability program? Uh, considering, you know, the issues we have in environment at the moment. So, actually, uh, in terms of how we engage, uh, it could even be as early as in 2010 when we started the, the Unilever Sustainable Living Plan. Um, industry analysts, uh, observers, all had an opinion that it was, you know, just another framework that people launched, etc. Um, but what was real about that was it was all time-bound and also very specific to uh, real targets. And it was a bold enough goal that it kind of made people nervous. Because what if you're gonna, what if, what if it's not possible? Um, and it, with that attitude, I think, um, we're trying to prove that it is possible. Um, and it's been a learning journey around, around that. Now, specific to the Philippines, um, we get asked about how real is your uh, no, how real is your effort on plastic, and your 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 goods are still packaged that way. It's real in the sense that we're willing um, to be uh, to put ourselves out there. Um, it's real in the sense that we know that we don't know um, all the answers. That's why uh, you know when I first entered Unilever. I was shocked at how much um, attention, executive prioritization they give on research and development for packaging. And also um, the intent to deliver um, any of the sustainability targets and programs that we're part of. Um, and, you know, sometimes, this is just me personally, haters are gonna hate. Um, and that's been so, sort of the attitude that prevented a lot of uh, good conversations to start. But I'm just wondering, you know, um, consumer behavior is so used to fast, small sachets and things. Um, I think, I believe, that there should be an effort to really change consumer behavior as well. Um, you know, large size packaging, get Lasada to deliver it, you know. Um, that versus the dingy dingy culture, only because that's what's the pollutant at the moment. So yes, you're doing all, it's really fantastic. You have all these uh, programs in place, but ultimately a job has to be done to convince consumers to change the way they consume your products. Yeah, Are you moving towards that direction at all? Yes, uh, I mentioned earlier the all things hair refillery. So people are now asking, nasa na siya, bakit tatlong linggo lang, ba't nasa mall, etc. Uh, what ayon yung dalin sa sa kalye? Uh, kami, we're okay. We want to do it. We really want to do it. But this is a matter also of um, working with our government regulators uh, to make sure that they allow us. And you know, this has opened their minds as well as I think the larger consumer base that we uh, serve. That people are ready. People are willing to buy. People don't want a messy uh, environment. 
um, you know, kausap ko mga ka, nasa barangay, etc. Talaga sa kanila, kalat lang talaga yan. Kalat. Ayoko nang makalat sa, bu sa buhay ko, sa, sa paligid ko, etc. And that's their tangible experience. And we're trying to give solutions for that. And, and yourself, Dan, where you sit in, fashion, in the fashion world. The term fast fashion actually has a negative connotation yes, right now. Yes, it does. Now. It does. That's right. Um, but we don't want to be called fast fashion. Uh, because we don't at all encourage our customers to have a throwaway attitude. So we want them to better care for their garments. That's why if you are wearing an H&M right now, you go and check out your label. There is what we call the, lever, the clevercare.info to allow you to know how to make your clothes last longer. I see. So it's clevercare.info. Info. Info. Okay. And you at the check same your time, labels on that, yeah, sorry. on your clothes, yeah. At the same time, the problem is not the speed of fashion, but badly produced fashion. That's the main problem. So when it comes to sustainability, we talk about not just planet, but also people. Um, I think the only thing that H&M is not doing well today is that we're not communicating what we do exactly. as much as we I, should be. I, I could, yeah, I agree with that. I think there is an area to communicate all that you do yeah. so that more people that get involved or buy your products know how to react to it, you know, to put it back in the circular economy. We've been involved in sustainability as early as the late 90s when we discovered irregularities in our supply chain. So we went from risk mitigation to being one of the leaders in finding out ways on how we can uh, collaborate with the government and the factory owners to give these workers and improve their lives uh, at work. And at the same time going into, of course, using sustainable materials. Like uh, in 2004, we first started um, introducing organic cotton. Back then when you say organic cotton, wow, that's so expensive. Expensive, yeah. And only available to a few uh, garments. But now, look at the H&M store, you can find or, um, organic cotton-made garments in every corner, not just within H&M, but also in other brands. So that's the goal. You introduce something, start small, but think big, and then scale up fast. Okay, I'm just going to ask one quick question. How, because you're already in that space of looking at sustainability, how can we convince other brands and other companies who have not yet embraced that or have not yet embraced digital transformation and not yet embraced a sustainability agenda? I mean, how, how do you think we can encourage them, brands and companies? Since you're already in that space, let's encourage more brands to, to be in that space. I, sorry, can I start? Okay, so I think, um, like what I said earlier, uh, three things. Start small. You don't have to think about the big things first. You know, start small, but have an ambitious goal and then scale up really fast. That's the way to go. Okay, thank you. Last. Yeah, uh, business case. You have to develop a really business case around, uh, a really good business case around what you want to do for sustainability. And chances are it'll be positive. Uh, if it's done right. And there are many, many, many sources of these best practices um, on how to make sustainability profitable. Um, now the challenge is really finding your niche uh, in whatever sector you work in. Okay. The long-term answer to that question is not on this side of the stage, but on that side of the stage. Yeah. Corporations are established to generate profit. You should talk with your money. So if you only support and buy products from sustainable companies, non-sustainable companies will be forced to transition. So the answer is there. Or alternately, if you want to do micro, you shave your head, you're sustainable because you do not consume as Shampoo. much sachet as you need to. All right, well, we have to wrap this one up. Um, thank you, Bon, Dan, and Ron. Thank you. thank you very much to our speakers and Angel.